I need, I will bring my heart. Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. I want to know you, I want to find you In every season, in every moment Before I bring my knee, I will bring my heart And seek you first I want to seek you, I want to seek you speak a word, let me hear your voice. And in the midst of pain, let me feel your joy. Ooh, I want to know you, I want to find you in every season, in every moment. Before I speak a word, I will bring my heart. That was my girlfriend. <laughs> God gave me a gift early. <laughs> you sounded dope. Um, to God be the glory and the honor. Um, beautiful. She's using me to get to Jesus. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the song says, I want to seek you first. Exactly what I want to do today before I preach. I want to seek you and I want to give you the glory and I want to give you the honor and the props. We love you, but teach us how to love you more better. Today, Lord, we invite you, in fact, Express yourself through me today. Serenade your church. Use me in any way you want to remind the church that you love them, that you've beat the grave, and that you're soon coming back. Lord, I pray for your Holy Ghost. Use me powerfully. I also ask that you forgive me of all my sins from the day I was born to this very moment. 
because I don't want to be a stumbling block from you reaching your peoples. Lord, we follow a restraining order against Lucifer and his demons. Don't let that punk come a thousand yards from this auditorium. And may you be the glory and the honor forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. I want to thank uh, Pastor Labrador for the invitation. Somebody give him a hand clap. That's my man. He's always had my back. Always, always. Um, even back in the day in West Palm Beach. And um, check this out. He was actually, uh, my girlfriend's name, Patricia. He was actually her teacher once upon a time. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Old school, for real, for real. <laughs> I was um, looking online just last week and I found something on Facebook that I want to share with you guys it was pretty dope it was it was awesome and the writer says something like this he's asking a bunch of questions he said I never did find out in the 55 years of life that I have questions important questions like these. He said, I never did find out who let the dogs out. <laughs> I never did find out where's the beef. I never found out how to get to Sesame Street. I never found out why do all the flavors of Fruit Loops taste exactly the same. Why eggs are packaged in a flimsy paper carton, but batteries are secured in plastic that's tough as nails? I never found out why women can't put on mascara with their mouth closed. Why is abbreviated such a long word? I never found out why lemon juice is made with artificial flavor, yet dishwashing liquid is made from real lemons. I never found out why do you put two cents in it, but it's only a penny for your thoughts. I never found out what is Victoria's secret, and I never found out one question, how in the world do you lose Jesus on the holidays? Let's go to the Bible, to the book of St. Luke, chapter 2. For those of you guys that got your Bibles or break out your phones, Luke chapter 2. I'm going to read 41 through 45. Say amen when you have it. Luke chapter 2, 41 through 45. Amen? The word of God is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and God's Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. It goes like this. This is my holiday sermon, my, my Christmas theme sermon entitled, uh, God, Jesus. Every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Verse 42. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. Verse 43. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. What? Verse 44. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled for a whole day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and their friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Somebody say, Amen. 
Amen. We, we know the Christmas story. We, we know that the angels told the wise men and the shepherds, they said, Mira, check this out. You're going to find a baby wrapped in a manger. Usually you wrap a gift. They were saying that God's gift to earth comes gift wrapped somebody say amen and you're gonna find them in a manger and the wise men followed the, the, the stars and, and 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 the shepherds went to the manger everything started off all good in the hood maybe some of your years started off the same way it was all good everything was okay you started your diet Sunday no wait a minute fat people never start a diet Sunday Monday somebody say amen <laughs> you started your diet Monday Tuesday Wednesday but then Thursday if you're lucky you break it it starts off good the baby was wrapped in the manger they found him but then 12 years later God's gift to earth, to me, to you, is lost. How do you forget about Jesus? Have, have you ever lost something of value? I tried to lose waste once, but it found me. Somebody say mercy. It came with a crew after that. It found me two times. Somebody say what? What? Have you ever lost something of value? Have you ever lost your iPhone? Yesterday we were driving over here and somebody forgot the iPhone and we had a, we had a turn mat, make a U-turn, 30 minutes because when you lose your phone, right? It's, it's something about losing your phone. You walk out the house like you naked. Ah, you check everything. <laughs> Have you ever lost your wedding ring? Have you ever lost your mind? Somebody's looking at their neighbor and saying, yep, you did. Loca. <laughs> Have you ever lost a picture that you accidentally deleted or an email? Something of value. How do you lose God though? How do you even report him missing? How do you call the cops and say, yo man, I slipped. What happened? I lost God. How do you even report that? How do you even pray now? How do you go on your knees and say, oops, my bad. I lost your baby boy. Remember, this ain't no ordinary baby boy. This is the little superhero that takes away the sin of the earth. Somebody say, amen. How, how, how does those deadbeat parents, what? Lose Jesus. Before we start criticizing them. How about us? How many times... Do we lose Jesus? What about Christmas? We, we have celebrated Christmas. And, and, and did we even think about Jesus? We, we, we thought about our trees. We thought about putting presents there. Some of us are still in debt because they were putting presents under the Christmas tree. Some of them, I said, I'll owe you. I'll owe you next week. You got the star you got the, the the fake manger you got the presence you got z88 on the radio and they play it almost the whole month christmas music you got a charlie brown christmas special but we lose them all the time so do i somebody say mercy we lose them every time. Even in Easter, we, we forget about Jesus. We forget about Jesus on Easter and, and we substitute him with bunnies and chocolate candies. How do we forget about God? You know, um, I went to Russia. Somebody say amen because I'm from the hood. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I went to Russia to preach. They paid for it. Well, man, I, I got first class. Somebody say amen. They were giving me all kind of food. I was pretending that, that my girlfriend was in the bathroom just to get two plates. Amen. Yeah, she's going to want the steak as well. <laughs> 
and a Malta India. <laughs> she wants what? She's gonna just hook her up. I went to Russia and I came back and um, they gave me this this wooden manger, beautiful wooden manger. And I'm like, yo, that's, that's my prized possession. That's from Russia, right? And I brought it. And, and every year I put it under the Christmas tree. And boom, wooden manger. But I also have Benito, a little uh, puppy. I have a, a puppy, a Yorkie. His name is Cookie. Little cute, little Chewbacca looking stuffed animal. Somebody say, what? Mm. Cute dog, but, but check out what happens. The dog got jealous of the little people that were giving them competition, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Because I was bringing everybody home, yo, check out my manger from Russia. And, and the little puppy got jealous. You know what he did? One morning, I wake up. Mary has a scratch on her face. Somebody say mercy because of Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Joseph... Got a scar in his face. Now he's Tony Montana. Somebody say, what? And baby Jesus. Where's baby Jesus? The puppy took baby Jesus. He bit baby Jesus. Chopped off baby Jesus' head. Somebody say, ah. He took off. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I called the pastor, bro. Get some anointing oil. We got Cujo. This guy's, this dog is possessed. <laughs> que pejo diabólico. Somebody say, what? I wanted to cake him, toma. <laughs> no, baby Jesus. Now, I couldn't even super glue it together. Now, in, uh, under my manger, there's no, there's no baby Jesus. In some of your houses, there's no baby Jesus either. In some of your hearts, there's no baby Jesus either. Today I'm going to tell you, quoting the author, Jesus is the author and the finisher of the faith. Somebody say amen. We need Jesus. How do you make it without Christ? How are you going to jump off a plane without a parachute? I wouldn't jump off a plane anyway. Somebody say mercy. Well, we, we get caught up. We get caught up in the holidays. We get caught up with New Year's resolutions. And we forget to invite Jesus to make that New Year's resolution with us. I try to diet all my life. But to be honest, thinking about it now, I have never invited Jesus to go on a diet with me. Because I'm scared. He's going to tell me to stop eating meat. Somebody say mercy. That's why I didn't want to tell you nothing. I was playing. <laughs> we forget about him. We, for, we get caught up. And then there's some people that want to get rid of Jesus totally on the holidays. You know who they are. Hey, get rid of that pagan tree. Get rid of that star. Get rid of me. Shut up. Why not take advantage, a writer says, of the holidays that the world Celebrate and worship Jesus as well. Somebody say amen. Why not take advantage when the Christmas tree is up? Why not taking advantage when, when, when everybody's in a happy, happy spirit? Even the Mr. Grinch said this. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. People that just want to throw him away. No, no. There's never room for Jesus. Mary and Joseph was walking and he got lost. You got Jesus? No, I thought you had him. No, he was with you guys when you guys were playing dominoes. He, he was with the fellas. No, he was with the girls when they were playing Uno. Where's Jesus? Today I'm going to ask you the same thing. Where's Jesus? The innkeeper had no room for him either. The church doesn't have no room for him either. Where's Jesus? Where is the one? Listen, this is what the wise men, this pagan astrologers came from, from far. And they came and, and you know what they said? That was the first question when they went to a palace. They went, where is the one that has been born king of the Jews? And I'm going to ask you the same thing in your heart, in your house. 
where is the one that is called the king of the Jews? Where is he? Did you lose him? Have you lost him? Have you lost focus? I'm in love now. Somebody say amen. I'm Papi Chulo for real now. What, what, ooh, ooh. Somebody say ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm on cloud nine. I'm, I'm, she, she reminds me of Jesus. You do. You accept this? Wow. <laughs> but we started our relationship with Christ. Somebody say amen. When, when, when my ex took away my son and I was crying and I got a broken heart, she said, come over. And I went over, right? Check this out. And I went over to her and, and she let me piggyback off her faith because I did not have Jesus. In fact, I was the opposite. I was mad at God. How are you going to let her take my baby boy? I have no legal rights because he's my stepson. Thought I was going to be married forever, so I procrastinated giving him my last name so I can't do nothing. She said, come over. And she saw that I couldn't pray. And she prayed for me. She prayed for a pastor. She let me cry on her shoulder. Jesus was lost, but not in her heart. Somebody say amen. Amen. She reminded me. She, she reminded me that it, it, it may seem that, that he's not there. It's going to seem, you know, 2017, we always say it's going to be all year, but it's going to be deaths. It's going to be sickness. I wanted to die. I wanted to die four years ago. I wanted to die a year and a half ago when I preached in Andrews University. And I'm over there in a hotel room eating pizza, eating pizza, hoping that I get a heart attack because I didn't want to live no more. Am I talking to somebody here today? And God was telling me, wait, Papa, hold up, man. Me like, homie, hold up. I got a plan for you, man. I got plans to prosper you, to give you a future. Man, wait till you see your boo-boo bear. Somebody say amen. She's going to help you in your ministry. She's going to sing. And she's going to sing first. First time we've ever tag team is here. Pastor Labrador, thank you. Somebody say Amen. Glory be to God, and I know she'll give it to him too. How do you forget Jesus? I don't want to forget Jesus, never. Every time I eat with her, I, I, I want to pray for us. Every time we do anything together, pray. I, I want to walk into a place where you, we don't, you don't see the ghetto preacher, you see Jesus. Hey man, that's Jay right there. I want you guys to, I don't know if you guys ever seen the old married couples They've been married like for 50 years and they're already looking like each other. Did you marry your sister, pervert? <laughs> nah, we just been together for 50 years. I want to be so close with some, I want to be so close. Wait a minute, no, I don't want to be that close because then you're going to be bald headed and fat. Somebody say mercy. <laughs> just stay like that, just stay like that. No, no cambie. <laughs> stay far, stay far. Love me from a distance. <laughs> But I want to be so close to Jesus that you don't see me no more. I don't want him to be lost in my life no more. Somebody say amen. We forget about him. We, we forget about him. The lights, the presence, the sails. Forget about Jesus. 2017, I'm going to beg you. Don't forget Jesus. Somebody say amen. You know what happened? Mary, what? Mary and Joseph, they, they're walking away. And we can say they're deadbeats, but we do it all the time. And they're walking away. And, and the Bible says they walk one day without Jesus. Spirit of prophecy says that you can't last one minute, let alone a second, without Jesus. Today I'm going to invite you 
Today I'm going to ask you to bring back Jesus because for real, for real, through that, he is the reason for the season. Somebody say amen. Amen. Check it out. I always wanted a special kind of watch. My, check out this watch. This is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of WWE wrestling. And this, this is the actual heavyweight champion belt held by one of my favorite, AJ Styles. He's a Christian and I gave him one of my books. Cool dude, right? But I always wanted this watch. Man, when I saw it, I, I, I had to save up for it. Somebody say amen. I had to put it on layaway. Somebody say amen if you can relate to layaway. I laid it away. I'm like, I'm going to get it one day. Man, before Christmas, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to get it. And I got it. Amen. Because he will give you the desires of your heart. He gave me her and this. Somebody say amen. A double dose from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but you would swear I would wear this every day. I don't. I only wear this on special occasions when I preach in origin. Somebody say amen. And when I'm on a date with her. Special occasions. But check this out. Some of us treat God just like that. You have him. He's in your midst. But you only take him out on special occasions. Somebody say mercy. You only take him back in Christmas. You only take him out when, when, man, when there's a problem. You only take him out when something's going on. You only take him out when you need money. You only take him. No. Why not bring him out? Why not let everybody see that Jesus lives in you? Before Patricia, I had, a, I was going on dates. You were? <laughs> Who was that crazy? <laughs> no way. And then, <laughs> you know how you fake it when you go on dates? One girl said, I said, where you want to go, ma? Wherever you want. And she said, let's go to Sweet Tomatoes. Ew, no! I don't want to just eat lettuce. Somebody say mercy. Persecution coming early. <laughs> Can we go to Golden Corral after? <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to stop wrapping up. <laughs> Man. I faked it. I'm like, oh, duh, okay. I'm eating lettuce. <sighs> Only time I ever ate lettuce and tomato was on a Whopper. Somebody say a man. <laughs> With cheese and I double <laughs> supersized the fries and everything. Second. I had a piece of lettuce on the whole date for two hours. It was hanging out my teeth. I looked like I had a green. I was like the Grinch with, with a green gold tea, right? It was coming out. She was looking at me. And I'm like, I'm trying to kick it, right? I'm trying to do all kind of poetry. And I'm like, baby, my life without you is empty. Like church on Wednesday nights. Somebody say mercy. <laughs> I dropped her off. She blocked me from Facebook. Somebody say mercy. She blocked me from Instagram. I'm looking, I'm looking at her sister. Where she at? Where she at, dog? <laughs> Not only did you lose Jesus, I lost her. And then at night I go brush my teeth and I'm, what? I got a piece of lettuce and it's hitting my, it's like this. Look at me, what? All she saw was the lettuce. <laughs> well, you know, at least she saw lettuce and not a piece of meat. Somebody say, I mean, I'd rather have lettuce than KFC hanging out your teeth. <laughs> the piano player, if he wants to come, I'm going to wrap it up. Keyboard. Check it out. All she saw was the piece of lettuce. I would love for somebody when they see me, they see the piece of lettuce, they see Christ Jesus. Instead of seeing me, she saw the green that was coming out my teeth. 
instead of seeing me I want you to see Jesus and him crucified and him a resurrected hero and him a soon coming savior today I'm asking you you got Jesus like for real for real Mary and Joseph are walking away and there was something missing. Some of you guys are walking with something missing right now. Some of you guys just came because it's the holidays, but you never come to church. There's something missing. But you're here, and I thank God you're here. But when you're living a life in the world, and you're smoking and you're drinking, you're clubbing, Just messing up. Doesn't have to be all that either. Gang banging. You, what, what, what's your sin? Whatever. You're living your life. There's going to come in a time in your life that there's, there's going to be something missing. You could have it all. I had Cadillacs. I had the Lincoln Town cars. I, I had a big five, six story house. I had the Rolex watches. I ate with Jennifer Lopez and Al Pacino. But there was something missing. Something always missing. I dined with kings and queens and I've been in gutters and ate poke and beans. There was always something missing. Joseph and Mary are going home. Something here. I said, hey, Jesus, you got him? No, I thought you had him. I don't got him. Oh, we left him. We left him? Yeah, the Bible says. Even though they walked one day and they were close to home. They were close to that finish line. They were close to the finish line. But before they went like this, before they hit the F, they said, hold up. Uh -uh. I don't want to go to that finish line without Jesus. Uh -uh. Wait a minute. Home is where my heart is and my heart is in church. Let's go back. You got me? I got you. I'm your ride or die, homie. You got me? Come on. I got my Nike cross trainers, boo. Let's go back to church. We'll find them there. The altar call is this. Today you want to come back home? You want to give your life to Jesus anew for 2017? You want to start over? You want to invite him? To not only be in your house but be a tenant there as well and the landlord at the same time you want to invite him to your church you want to invite him to go on that diet with you you want to invite him for that relationship with you you want to invite him to the pulpit with you you want to invite him to your work and to your school today you got a chance if that's you I want you to run back to Jerusalem. Go back to that old school religion. Go back. To, it was good enough for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. I want you to go back. And I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the stupid religions that, that, that draw people from Jesus instead of bringing them to. Uh -uh. I'm talking about that religion that points to Jesus as Savior. Not man. Jesus. You want to start over. You want to renew your contract, this time with blood. I want you to come up here. Meet me over here. Meet me over here. The praise and worship team can come back up as well if they want. You want to go back to Jerusalem. You want to go back home. You want to start over 2017 probably I'll meet you in a minute boo -boo. you want to go back home 
come home. Come home and I guarantee you, maybe not in this life, but in the life to come, you will live happily ever after. Don't make another move without Jesus. Don't take another breath without Jesus. Don't go to sleep without Jesus. Don't eat without Jesus. Trust him. Trust him. My ex-wife took away my baby boy. She said we're gonna move on without you for 2017. And it hurt me and it broke my heart and it still broke today. But you know what I did? I said, Lord, I'm gonna trust in you. The timing is perfect. You gave me boo boo bear. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm not gonna complain. I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna praise you anyways, right? I'm gonna give you my son as an offering. That's all I have. I'm gonna give you my son. Hoping you give it back to me. I'm gonna give you my son. Hoping you give him back to me. In fact, that's the Christmas message. God gave us his only son. Trusting that you will give him back to him. That's my sermon. That's my testimony. And that's the life of a ghetto preacher. Now, you're here. You don't have much to give him either. I wonder if the angels smiled when the wise men gave him cologne from Macy's. How, how do you give cologne to a God that gave fragrance to the Garden of Eden? I wonder if the angels smiled when the wise men gave him gold when in heaven's streets are paved with that very object. It's nothing you can give him. What else can you give a God that's of value? I know. You can give him this. No matter how broken it is, you can give him this. You can give him this. Give him your life. Give him your kids. Give him your relationships. I'm gonna join my girlfriend. I don't want nobody else, I'm done. It's not a proposal or anything because I want to do it special, but I want to walk the streets of gold with you. I'm going to join you. So I'm going to accept this altar call too. This is for me first. I'm going to have Pastor Labrador come up and say the final prayer for you guys and for us. May God bless you. One love. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Let us pray. I'd like to really thank Willie. Uh, Willie came to uh, my church about 15 years ago. Uh, he had just started his walk with the Lord and come back and and since uh, he was a little rough with, in the edges, you know, he wanted to preach, but not too many people were open to letting him preach. And uh, so he, you know, they called me and so I said, well, come on over. And uh, came to preach. It's, I know for the people, it was a little bit strange. He had all this bling on and all this stuff on, you know, and. And, uh, and he came and, uh, and he preached, uh, preached a powerful message. He's grown. Uh, and uh, I'm glad I was able to be part of that beginnings there. And thank you for being uh, with us here today. Um, let us bow heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, 
thank you so much. Uh, you know, we've left you a bunch of times, not just once. Mary and Joseph left you one time, and we've been hearing about it for 2,000 years. And we leave you all the time. We leave you home when we go on vacations. We leave you home when we got to make a deal that might not be right with you. We leave you home when we go out with certain friends. We leave you home when we may go to certain places. I guess today what Willie's talking about is can we really bring you, bring you home to stay this time? Can we really just go where you want us to go? Can we let you make the invitation? And we ask that this year, Lord, you may become a permanent residence in our hearts. Permanent residence in our homes, in our cars. That you may speak through us, speak for us. And that you may fill our lives and everything that we do. That we may love your presence. That we may never have to ask you to, to just leave for a little bit, you know, and come back later. But that we, Lord, may just be able to, to just have you and to just enjoy your presence no matter where we are, what we do. And, and that is harder uh, done than said. Because we got this flesh that's fighting, Lord. And, and even as we are here right now in your presence and, and we're hearing this prayer and I'm saying it and you're hearing it. At the same time, we're probably thinking about our struggles that are keeping away, keeping us away from making that real. But I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus to tell Satan to go away. In the name of Jesus to let our own insecurities go away. And in the name of Jesus to accept your presence right here, right now, complete and full. And Lord, uh, as, uh, as Willie comes here together with uh, Patty, uh, as I knew her in ninth grade, as I was teaching Bible, I'm so glad to see them here together. And Lord, that, uh, that this relationship that they have started might just be the beginning of something great, Lord. I ask you to give them a special blessing that your Holy Spirit may come upon them, Lord, and anoint them, anoint them for ministry together so that they will, will glorify your name everywhere they go. And today, Lord, I ask for an anointing upon every person that's here today. As we make this promise to invite you into our lives, Lord, that we are willing to, to throw away even the things that we love, not the things that we hate, but the things that we love that we may put them aside because they are in the way of you leading us. When Jesus was born, they said, uh, sorry, there's no room. But the issue was that it was full and sometimes our lives are so full and so busy that we have no room for you. But today, Lord, we ask you to take out, we give you permission to clean house and to take everything out and to just, Lord, uh, find a real comfy place within us. Make yourself at home, Jesus. Make yourself at home. And we want you to stay. Stay. Lord, bless us as we leave this place that your presence may be with us. Your presence may give us wisdom and understanding. And if we fall, help us to get up again and to not give up. Let this year be the best year of our lives. Not because we get more money, not because we get a bigger house, not because we get a car, but because this is the year that we have walked closer to you than ever before. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.